Often we see people who have even what we might consider to be rel relatively low level crime or, or even trivial, but the effect that it has on the victim um, can be devastating. My first experience with hate crimes was as a victim. I myself am transgender. Uh, so when I was in I was in school, I was I was female. I came out first as being gay, and got a little bit of abuse because of that. And I did I almost didn't want to come out as as transgender. I've had rocks thrown at my face. I've been beat up outside of pubs for the toilets I've been in, um, and it almost made me go into a bit of a go into my shell a little bit. And I. When I first came out, I felt really, really confident, really, you know, this is who I am and I'm allowed to be who I am now. Then, once I'd experienced the abuse, it sort of made me shrink back in a little bit. We look for a hostility, a motivation and a prejudice towards what are known as protected characteristics. Now those protected characteristics are race, transgender, disability, religion and faith, and sexual orientation, and they can be broken down further. They will look at those three issues, whether there's been a motivation, a hostility, a prejudice shown to the um, victim. And if that can be proven that the, uh, this was the reason for the crime, then that is, is classed as a hate crime. Because there is no such thing as a hate crime. It's a crime with a hate element attached to it. It's public order crime, so anything that could harass, alarm and distress someone. Assaults and criminal damage, if they have been motivated by hate towards the five protected characteristics um, once that goes forward to court um, they will be sentenced accordingly and it will it, it can carry up to a two-year sentence uplift on the original sentence it was something so unexpected and was such a shock to myself. Um, I haven't experienced any racism since I was a teenager, and this is something that came totally out of the blue. I think what a lot of people don't realise is that the hate element of, of a hate crime is sometimes the, the, the most damaging to the victim. People become isolated, they become withdrawn. Uh, I often see uh, mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, um, they change their way of life. None of us, you know, expect to or want to be a victim of crime, but it, it's that added element that's, that's personal to you. They've not just committed a crime, they've attacked part of your characteristic, whatever that is, you know, whether it's your, your race, your gender, if you've got a disability, your religion, they've made it very, very personal to you. Victim support traditionally are known for providing uh, both emotional support and practical support. We hope we never need that service, but the victim support service is very valuable. I didn't think I'd need it. I, I think with myself, I was carrying on, trying to feel okay, going to work, doing the usual things, and I wasn't okay. Victim support is a listening service where people can come to us for free um, advice and also maybe speak to us and tell us something that, that they wouldn't feel comfortable uh, disclosing to their family or friends. I've been in cases where I've sat for an hour, virtually said nothing, and the victim at the end of it said, oh, thank you so much, you've done so much for me. And all I've done is sat there and listened to them. And that is cathartic. It's really 
a healing process part of it. No matter how strong a person you may think you are, we all need support sometimes in our lives and this was a time that I needed that support and that's where I found victim support service very invaluable to me. Hate crime generally uh, is, is far less reported than any other kind of crime. If you had to go into a police station and give a report, either yourself or someone else has been a victim of hate crime, it's a very intimidating sort of atmosphere, I suppose, for someone so young or someone that's part of a culture that doesn't carry a lot of trust in the police. So that's what we try and do as North Wales Police. I know victim support can liaise with us as well in order to break down those barriers to reporting. I think it's important to report any hate crime. Don't be feel ashamed or awkward about doing that. The police are there to help and there is more awareness. They will help you. You know, you're the victim. It's important that you get an outcome to this and to seek support. Witnesses are crucial because they will corroborate evidence. I mean, there, there, there are times where, for example, somebody may be assaulted, it's captured on CCTV, but there's no sound. And if there is homophobic abuse or um, racial abuse, we, you know, if witnesses come forward, if it can be proven that there's a hate element, we go back to the, uh, the courts and there's the, the up to 50% uplift on the sentencing available to the, the, the judge at the time. If you witness a hate crime, report it straight away. Um, whether it be through 101, 999, report it, get it out there, because that person may not even think that they are a victim. And sometimes they, they need someone to speak up for them, to, to reinforce to them that not all of society is like that and there are people that will stand up and champion them.